Okay, today is July the 2nd, Sunday evening, just after the weekly open. Let's do the market outlook and plans for the week ahead. So before I get into anything, let's go ahead and point out that we just had our quarter of the reset. So we are now officially in Q3. I know Q2 wasn't necessarily the easiest quarter to trade this year. So hopefully everybody was able to make it out all right. Um, it definitely seems like there's more opportunity on the horizon as we have entered into Q3. So let's go ahead and start off with the news events. Um, there isn't really anything too crazy to worry about. Um, the main thing is that we have the FOMC minutes on Wednesday. I'd like to make take a moment to make a quick note around this and just say that I don't really think that these events are really that important for us anymore. Um, as we transitioned out of the bull market into the bear market in 2022, um, these kind of events like FOMC and CPI really produced consistent volatility, largely because people would you know, hedge to protect themselves and then aggressively unwind their hedges. Um, this has really died off. I've already made a note of this before, but I want to touch on it again, that um, it's kind of like just how things go. As everybody comes to expect something, it stops working. So the volatility around these events used to be incredibly reliable, where it was, you know, more or less in the bear market. Those were the best trading days of the week. Um, that's not really uh, the status quo going forward. So it's a good idea to have, you know, pay attention to when these events are, but they don't really have that much of a bearing on our trading, at least in my opinion. So let's go ahead and move forward and get into um, the boomer indexes. Let's do a light rundown on the NAS and the S&P. Uh, let's start off with the S&P. It's basically going to be the same exact read on both. Um, so the TLDR on it is that these things have been ridiculously strong all year. Shorting these things is an absolute no-go for me. Um, from a technical standpoint, you know, the, the NAS in particular and, the, you know, the S&P a little bit, but, you know, less so, uh, they're overextended. So what I wanted to see was, you know, some sort of kind of compression. It doesn't really look like that's what we're going to get at this point because it looks like we're just, you know, bouncing off the wild bands and continuing upwards. You know, if um, we were to get bonked back into this range, you know, oscillating around this HVN is a pretty reasonable expectation. So that was one of the things I was looking for. Um, you know, alternatively, you could always pull back, but, you know, before continuation, but I really think that just, you know, oscillating around this value and trading up is the most likely thing. But who knows with how it's looking right now, it might just break out, um, which since the correlation is low to crypto, it's not really going to matter. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to have equities trading up if we want crypto to trade up. It's not going to hurt us, right? Um, so that's pretty much it for the S&P. Same kind of note for the NAS. The NAS is a little bit more overextended than the S&P is, but it's basically the same exact picture. I would not short these things. If I was actively trading them, all I would ever be doing was playing intraday continuation longs or, you know, maybe doing swing longs on any sort of compression or pullback. Um, so I would recommend keeping it simple and follow the trend. Um, fading the trend is definitely a, a midwit trap most of the time. So let's go ahead and get into uh, crypto. This is the main market that we're going to care about. Uh, let's do a light top to bottom rundown. So let's start off with a higher time frame. Um, so where we're at with the higher time frame is that, you know, like we expected in March, um, we got a pretty bloody Q2. We kind of front run my plan where I expected the bullishness to return in Q3. And when we got the ETF news, um, that expedited that plan. Um, so everything's looking like sunshine and rainbows at this point. I hope that everybody is uh, participating in the bull trend. I know that, you know, a lot of you maybe missed this impulse, but don't sweat it because at the end of the day, you know, there's been opportunities to get along in this range for continuation. And even if you miss that, you just need to be hunting the altcoins, which we're obviously going to be covering later. Visualizing the trend within this channel, I think that, you know, we're probably going to be able to trade up into this region. And um, if we, you know, this is what I've been waiting for forever to trade up into 3334. Um, that will be an area where I really assess my risk and probably make some changes to positioning. But everything looks healthy. It looks like we should be able to trade up you know, um, this week, to be honest. So um, make note too around holidays, right? Because it's the fourth um, in two days. So, you know, markets are going to be wonky. I think that that will probably set up crypto. Something I've noticed in the past is that holidays, um, you know, when other markets are closed, crypto trades regardless. Um, and a lot of the time that gives crypto kind of the all clear to just do its own thing. Um, so we'll be definitely making a note of that. For more information, check out the Paragon Group with the link below, where I cover everything from how I trade to how you can develop your own style. So let's go ahead and zoom in, and uh, let's talk about the lower time frame things. You know, so where we're at right now is we've been compressing into this May 2022 comp. Um, I really only think it's just a matter of time before we accept above it, but who knows? It's always there's always a possibility that we juke down before. 
but I would be very surprised if we kind of had this kind of equally high setup um, when we have this clear trend that's developed throughout the year. So that's pretty much it for the corn. TLDR is, I think it's just a matter of time before we trade up. I have my plans for what it'll look like if I'm wrong. So I think that's probably a good segue for us to break into the altcoin section. Let's go ahead and cover the alts. Um, so most alts still look horrible. The only real alt, there's a few outliers here and there. Mostly it's the dino coins that look well. So essentially the narrative is that all these old proof of work coins are not getting, uh, they're not going to be considered as securities. So that was the narrative. Uh, I think there's a whole lot of other narratives. To be honest, I don't really care about what the reasoning for why these boomer coins are trending up. All I care about is the fact that they're good trends for me to ride. So let's go ahead and cover some of these. Let's start off with Tomo. Um, so where I'm at with Tomo is, you know, we, we started talking about this at some point over here that momentum was being lost. I think Tomo is pretty much dead at this point. I would say though, um, and this was one of our major lessons last week that um, you know, I don't want to short something like this because I think it's done. I think that, you know, playing the continuation longs is still pretty, you know, high EV. Um, so I think that Tomo probably has one more good long in it, probably into this HVM before it's, you know, actually dead. Um, so I'm not going to be rushing into trading Tomo because it's not my, my favorite right now, but I'm going to keep it on my list and it is potentially one that I might you know, go ahead and play this setup that we have depicted here. Uh, INJ has been a, a really good one to keep an eye on as well. Um, it's basically changed its trend structure, so it's pretty bullish again, in my opinion. $10 represents pretty significant resistance. If INJ gets over $10, this thing, you know, can just absolutely fly. Um, so I have zero positioning on this one, but a good one to pay attention to. STX is another decent one. Um, it's basically, it's just going to be high beta to Bitcoin. Um, this Ant perp, this thing is really... Um, really kind of set up to trade upwards in my opinion it's got really strong structure on the vwaps so basically i would be looking for this thing to reclaim its quarterly that it just you know the fresh quarterly that's coming through if this thing starts to get over its quarterly again then i will almost certainly be playing trend continuation on this um trx you know now we're going to start to get into the boomer coins pretty much so tron um isn't the strongest of the boomer coins but it's you know pretty reasonable um storage you know i'm just going to keep an eye on this one i think that structurally it looks kind of bad according to the vwaps but this is a pretty strong rally so i might keep an eye on this one um, but moving forward with the boomer coins you know xlm xlm is trading up into major resistance right now um so i wouldn't be wanting to long it just as is but you know if it starts to look bullish on the quarterly and starts to get through this resistance area then you know trend continuation on this thing um you know it could probably just double pretty quickly uh, maybe not double, but, you know, probably go up 30, 40 percent if it flips this pretty easily. Um, kind of same story with uh, Ethereum Classic. Um, this looks a lot like storage um, where if these things can start to develop a bullish, bullish VWAP, then I'll probably play a continuation on them. Solana is kind of in the same boat. Uh, I don't really again, I don't really want to act aggressively position into the, the coins that look like this, but it's just I want to keep them on my radar. Um, so let's go ahead and get into Litecoin um, because this is one of the ones I'm actually positioned in. Um, so I I don't know really if I want to chalk this up to luck or if my thesis is actually playing out. But, you know, I've been playing the Litecoin happening meme. Um, I believe that is probably about 30 days away, maybe a couple, maybe like 32, something like that. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I think that, you know, you could probably make the argument that BCH being so strong is what carried most of the other boomer coins up with it. And, um, you know, I just, I got rewarded for that with Litecoin. So sitting pretty on Litecoin and, um, you know, originally $80 was my invalidation moving forward. I think that we want to be basically looking at this like 106 region. If we lose 106, um, I'll probably get bearish on it again temporarily. Definitely would be looking to hedge at that point. But basically, as long as we're over 106, I'm looking to target into the 138, 140 region. With the happening being not that far away now at this point, um, I do want to start to dump my Litecoin again. So that's going to be my plan. I do hope that we can trade up a little bit more, and then I'm going to start unloading the bag. Um, I've been trading Litecoin a good amount this year. Originally, I longed it over here, and then we sold it over here in the 90s. I started to buy back in. Um, and they made me sweat and I had to put on hedges and waste money with that. But luckily I got saved and um, it, it does seem like the Litecoin trade is going to work out quite well. But I don't want to jinx it or anything. A um, couple more to run through. So Bitcoin Cash has been really strong. 
Uh, my suspicion is that Bitcoin Cash is probably done. Um, you know, I wouldn't be interested in fading it by any means, but I do think that um, this being basically the market leader, um, I think that's that that period's pretty much over now. So hopefully the bid from BCH transitions into the other boomer coins like Litecoin. If, for example, BCH um, gets really bearish and that bid doesn't transition into other altcoins, everybody should be very cautious because if BCH um, trades bearishly, that's generally, you know, when, when you have clear market leaders that are catching a bid um, and they end up looking weak, that's normally a sign to go temporarily risk off. So the bid could always transition to other alts, but you want to be aware of both type of, you know, situations. Uh, the other, no, you know, probably the final coin that we'll run through is going to be Pepe. Um, you know, this is probably going to be one of the main altcoins that I'm trying to scalp. Um, BCH and Pepe were the altcoins I was scalping last week. Um, basically, uh, for higher time frame, the thesis is as long as we hold over the anchored VWAP, um, that we're bullish. So this looks like it's building, you know, a pretty decent comp. If you lose this VWAP or lose this comp, however you want to define it, um, you should definitely be bearish on this thing. It's going to go to Hades at that point. But as long as it's, you know, holding above this distribution, um, it should be able to trade up higher for a continuation. So that's pretty much it for altcoin stuff. Um, I do plan to do a bit of scalping this week, but mostly playing trend continuation is going to be my core, my core focus. I really am going to be using scalping as a way to distract myself so I don't overmanage my swings because um, that's kind of one of the worst things you guys can do these days. Um, we do have momentum playing out right now to the upside. If you're over managing these trades, you're gonna, you know, you're basically gonna end up getting left behind, um, you know. So, so that's it for the week, guys. Um, again, make a note that uh, you know markets are gonna be weird this week with holidays, um, and maybe we get some idiosyncratic flows in, into crypto um, because boom markets will be closed, I imagine, or at least uh, they won't be open the entire time. Uh, but that's it for the week, guys. Cheers.